Amin, 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 ya Rabbal Alamin. Thank you, Salam, for your good recitation. Without further ado, I would like now uh, to invite uh, CEO of Dimsight, Dr. Nair Rasul, to deliver her opening remarks. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, to all our clients from Bonyong, from CAF, from PS Wealth Management. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is our annual event with Musa Malaysia. Uh, as you know that uh, we are the only uh, full-fledged uh, Sharia uh, Shari in the world. Yeah, so really, uh, we feel like it's our obligation uh, to actually uh, do our duty in the Sharia space. Now, um, I think that uh, the industry is at a very important crossroads. Uh, the government just announced their fiscal uh, budget 2025. Uh, we are generally very positive on the uh, budget itself. Uh, we think that, uh, among others, that I think that uh, I think Zafri just issued a report today uh, that Malaysia punya advanced GDP estimate uh, uh, is about uh, year to date average is about 5.1%. Uh. Now, 5.1% uh, is actually slightly lower compared to the high end, uh, the, the top end, top range of the government expectation 4.8 to 5.3. Uh, but that is still uh, among the highest in ASEAN. Uh, now, we are currently making our assessment. Uh, we know that Prabowo baru hampir angkat sumpah. I think dua hari semalam. Uh, Indonesia is a serious contender for us. Uh, not only capital market, equity market, financial market, economic wise. Uh, mainly because uh, what we call Indonesia is a very young uh, country. Uh, our population is about uh, 32 million. 28, 32 million. Uh, Indonesia population is about 280 million. Over half of that uh, below 30 years. So it's a very young economy. So I think uh, the economic teams are actually working on the paper. Uh, what would be the, uh, what do you call the risk or the challenges for Malaysia as a result? Now, having said that, uh, this is our annual event with Busa Malaysia. Uh, we give our economic or uh, uh, to market outlook. Uh, uh, this is for the second half. Uh, uh, for the uh, for the first half, the second half pun kita ada lagi satu report kita akan bagi pada Pusat Malaysia. Uh, so jadi today, uh, I would like to welcome all of you. A uh, warm welcome uh, from uh, BIM Securities. We are a full uh, anak syarikat milik penuh Bank Islam. Yeah, uh, yeah. So jadi uh, we welcome you to hear uh, from our three distinguished uh, speakers uh, today. I think a few of them already here. Um, and then uh, you can enjoy uh, your lunch while listening to the uh, presentation by the distinguished speakers. I will begin first, uh, I think for about half an hour. And then uh, lunch, I think, will be served, I think, at 12. Uh, as you enjoy your 12 15, you can enjoy your lunch and then uh, start with uh, Solabes, uh, Wasco, and also the other one is. Uh, uh, yeah. So, Jadi. Um, uh, without further ado, uh, let me begin the, uh, the our presentation. Uh, this is actually uh, we submitted to Busa, yeah, uh, on uh, the uh, market outlook, uh, market outlook for the first half assessment. Now, uh, there are a few things that happened uh, in the first half. Uh, there were a lot of uncertainty regarding the U.S. interest rate uh, adjustments. Uh. I think at the point uh, U.S. interest rate adjustment, there were a lot of uncertainties. Uh, so market was a bit, uh, you know, volatile as a result. Tetapi generally, uh, the political condition di Malaysia was very stable. That led to the, uh, memang investor tahu that uh, US uh, federalism akan potong interest rate. So bermakna dia masuk our market, as you know, uh, uh, ringgit has reached a year high of 4.11 uh, per dollar. Currently trading, I think, about 4.29. Uh, year to date average is about 4.62. Yeah, so jadi, uh, this is uh, very close to our expectation of uh, year to date average. Uh, our projection is about 4.66, uh, 4.65 6, is around there. So, uh, just to give you some uh, input, this uh, first half analysis, LPM hijrah did very well. Uh, outpacing uh, the LPM KSEI, as you know, uh, hijrah do not have any uh, SIM stocks, uh, as we call it, uh, like banks, like gaming. So, they are a bit insulated on that score. Uh, tetapi uh, you can see here, LBM can okay, as you can see, a jump year to date, uh, first half uh, close to 11% compared to LBM can say at 9.3%. Uh, just to manage your expectation, 80% of the stocks in Bursa Malaysia is Shariah, full Shariah. Yeah. 
So jadi kalau kita nampak valuation wise, there is a huge uh, discount of FBM uh, KL uh, FBM drum against their historical average compared to FBM uh, uh, of uh, close to 12%. So if I were you, I will uh, you know I will put my liquidity inside of uh, FBM uh, Shariah. Almost also uh, against FBM Omar Shariah also did very well. If you can see here, FBM Omar Shariah increased by 14%, FBM Omar increased by 12%. Also, they did very well. So this is uh, the things that Bursa requested us to highlight so that investors are aware of the performance of all the Shariah Index. Now, kalau kita nampak, the discount pun, FBM Omar Shariah discount more than 30%, uh, FBM Omar is about 30%. Yeah? So this is actually uh, our pride and joy. Uh, if you can see the FBM KSCI, uh, number, number 5, FBM Hijra, uh, number five in the world. Number five in the world. I mean, they jump by close to 11%. Uh, compared to FBM KSCI, that jump only about 9%. So, maknanya, relatively, kalau you nampak the alpha to the shariah, give you a better return lah. Uh, but this is uh, even more uh, our pride and joy. Kalau kita nampak, they are about seven index uh, in Busa Malaysia. Uh, the biggest uh, contributor for the year is actually FBM 70, uh, rising by 22%. Uh, mid cap Shariah rising by close to 22%. Uh, kalau kita nampak ya small cap did very well, tetapi MBM actually was the lowest. Uh, they jump by almost 9%. So meaning uh, index wise, if I you know if I can suggest, perhaps you can go for these uh, mid cap stocks or small cap stocks. Uh, the upside is um, greater in that sense. Eh? So this is a review of Bursa Malaysia index. Uh, if you can see here. These are the 12 index uh, tracked by Bursa Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, issued by Bursa Malaysia and tracked by us. Ada 12 and kita nampak construction did really, really well. Uh, rising by 30, 37%. I think Zah uh, boleh uh, bagi uh, why. Uh, as you know, at the end of last year, uh, PICAS was passed with her. Last month. PICAS ni, uh, I think they can say that the government is actually uh, giving a direction on the construction sector of the country. PICAS ni is actually uh, some uh, directive or the visibility on the construction sector. Yeah, So it's very clear and kita nampak the construction sector did really well. Among the contracts that uh, we can uh, share with you, uh, actually the Subang Airport Regeneration, ERL Extension, uh, uh, ERL Station and Penang Airport Expansion. Now, 37 project already identified by the government. Under PICAS, it has to be minimum 5 million. Uh, the, the duration is about 7 years. And then the government already identified 41 uh, to launch uh, big projects. Among the big projects that they will focus from now on, after the budget need, uh, is actually on the tourism infrastructure, RE and uh, science and technology. Now, uh, our, uh, Rajana Malaysia ke-13 akan dilancarkan pada 2026. Ya? Uh, akan berjalan selama 5 tahun, 2026, 2030. Kita menjangkakan 3 projek besar akan di-announce dalam kerajaan. Among others are actually Melaka Aero City Hub, uh, LPPT 4 daripada Singapore ke Kuantan. Uh, the other one is HSR. Oh, you put Azum Baru, uh, HSR. So, daripada KL uh, to Singapore. Yeah, so these are among the projects. So, suffice to say that we think that for the next 10 years, uh, this sector will uh, continue to be segar. You know, segar, very rancak. Eh? So, that's why, kalau you nampak the uh, performance of construction sector tu, it did really well. There were a sell down after that. Uh, tetapi sell down tu, uh, they remain uh, in positive. Lah. Okay, now utilities rising by 35% because of the government drive. Uh, to reach a uh, uh, carbon free carbon footprint by 2050, uh, the government pun uh, renewable energy pun as I mentioned is among others uh, among the sector that the government is focusing now. Property uh, did really well as you know that uh, there were a lot of focus uh, in Johor and sepanjang dari Johor Melaka Negeri Sembilan ke KL because of KHSR among others and then of course technology because of the uh, EAT upcycle. Uh, but something to say the only one yang uh, negative is actually plantation lah. Yeah, because maybe because of oversupply and because of China punya economy that not uh, did not uh, do that did not do really well. Uh. Now let me go to the driver of the uh, equity market. Among the drivers, the biggest drivers is the 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 cut in the US uh, interest rate. Uh. This is something that we have told 
uh, di client daripada ibarat misalkan daripada awal tahun 2023 we have predicted that there will be interest rate cut in the US so bila interest there is an interest rate cut now uh, according to the guidance uh, by US Central Bank tahun ini ada 100 mata asas akan dipotong 100 basis points tahun depan 100 basis points another tahun 20 50 basis points so in total it will be cut by 250 basis so what does it mean meaning the return if you put your money in the local market kalau uh, dulu they get uh, more return uh, dekat US market sekarang ni they get lesser return so of course capital inflow tu akan go to the emerging economies because the economies are booming yeah so that's why this is one of the things and we are happy to share that Uh, year to date, uh, I'm not sure Imran, year to date capital inflow 3.3 billion, billion but I have to check But the capital info has been very rapid, investor has come back to our market eh? So this is actually, uh, kalau uh, kita tengok, uh, there is a capital uh, interest rate cut Of course, uh, they will uh, be very favorable for ringgit, kita nampak ringgit dah switch for 11 uh, uh, year best So kita ada, uh, as I mentioned just now, uh, average for the full year 463, uh, target for year end about 4.4, itu membuka eh, dalam 4.3 around there. Yeah. Yeah, tetapi sekarang maknanya there will be some uh, profit taking activity on the data, tapi um, we think that uh, the five value of ringgit should be between 3.7524. Yeah. 3.7524, there are a lot of factor that actually uh, drove uh, what you call ringgit higher among those that actually uh, political stability. Yeah. So just to give you a flavor, where are we? Uh, where are we? Kalau kita tengok discount, uh, discount FBM KSCI against the regional index, we are the smallest discount. Huh? However, investors do not look at only the index valuation; they look at other factors as well. Political stability. Contoh, the government is very clear on uh, on apa ekonomi madani. They very clear. Dia akan tengok. Okay, uh, Prabowo, what will be dia punya economic policy? You don't know. So jadi bila dia comparekan Indonesia dengan Malaysia, we have crossed the bridge very clear what the government is going to do. Prabowo is a big risk for them. So kalau macam tu, walaupun the discount between FBM dengan GCI ni a lot are different, they will come there. Okay. So among others that uh, would also play a role is actually the impact of US China trade war, China plus one. I had a headache this morning. I asked my economists. Who do you think will win uh, the US presidential election? He told me that he thinks that Trump will win. So, if Trump will win, I think this will not happen at all. You know, because there will be a lot of fighting, a lot of friction that is coming up. Macam kita tengok masa dia naik uh, 2018, eh? dia bicker dengan China ni. Masya Allah, sampai February 2020, just before COVID happened. Yeah, so jadi uh, there could be the same approach, you know, happening uh, apa tu uh, dengan Trump lah. Tapi I hope Trump tak menang. Oh, honestly, I hope uh, Kamala akan menang because policy continuity is there lah. But then again, uh, it's not long from now. On the 5th of November, we will know who will win lah. Tetapi okay, the other factors are actually government reforms, the fiscal outlook. I'm very pleased to share that the government has announced that uh, RON 95 akan diakunkan Uh, as we all know, uh, the subsidy untuk fuel sahaja, fuel sahaja, 20 billion, 20 billion, 20 billion, 15 billion untuk uh, petrol, 5 billion untuk diesel. Okay, dan the government, uh, they mentioned that bila dia apungkan RON 95, 85% daripada population will not hurt, get hurt. Okay. So that's very important no? because the government is able to save the uh, some subsidy punya spending. No? Uh, then another scary figure that I would like to share, non-fuel punya subsidy, subsidy untuk LPG, cooking gas, uh, apa uh, subsidi yang lain-lain tu uh, berjumlah dalam 32 billion. 32 billion campur 20 billion campur lagi 13 billion dia baru announce kan untuk uh, STR. Uh, apa tu sumbangan tunai ramah that dia naikkan maknanya government punya subsidi ni tinggi kan dan uh, I check balik ok uh, government punya subsidi I think totally about 60 billion government punya fiscal deficit is about 80 billion maknanya kita meminjam untuk bagi subsidi which is not healthy now this is something I would like to quote always I mean we are a host to about 3 to 5 million of immigrant kan? immigrant kan the Indonesian ke Bangladesh, what not. Eh? So, jadi, kalau satu juta, 
pakai kita punya minyak 10 liter uh, if i not mistaken motor 10 liter 1 liter katalah 10 liter dia pakai kan eh? 10 liter setahun 120 liter kalau you darab seringgit government punya subsidi then is our money or one ringgit 100 to 200 uh, 150 to 200 million that's our money we can give back to our children yeah? so jadi kita boleh bagi uh, toll free mana-mana Why do we have to? You see, remember, immigrants they don't pay tax. You and I we pay tax. So that is the spirit if the government would like to float. Yeah. So jadi dia dah promise by bulan enam tahun depan dia akan uh, floatkan round sembilan puluh lima now. So apa soalannya? Kenapa bulan enam? Gaya gaya China bulan ni, gaya bulan tiga, gaya Haji bulan lima bulan enam, bulan enam. So jadi bulan enam itu yang bulan enam tu. So jadi that's why it's actually bulan enam. Uh, tapi I, I I would like to take uh, 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 from a different angle lah. Now Malaysia have the highest car penetration in the world, the highest. Kalau kita tengok rumah kita ada dua tiga kereta kan. So bila minyak terlalu murah, we are reckless in our spending. Kan? So jadi when the government naikkan road sembilan puluh lima, maknanya kita able to control the pollution as well. Remember kita nak free apa tu? free carbon footprint by 2050. So, nak tak nak, dia memang kena apungkan RON95 untuk mengekang kerajaan meminjam dan meminjam dan meminjam untuk bagi subsidi. Kerana orang T15, dia tak pakai T20 sekarang, dia pakai T15, dia kata T15 kena bayar harga. I mean, I would like to tengok masa COVID, I was very surprised. Uh, masa COVID dulu kan, kadang-kadang uh, adalah masa apa tu, Uh, apa tu, uh, tutup ekonomi tu, dia panggil apa tu, masa tu punya kita MCO MCO, ada MCO 2 tu dah buka ekonomi, sekali nak nampak kena airport tu, ramai orang beratu, semua tu T20 They didn't work, they have a lot of money, that they can pay Maksudnya they can pay subsidi harga benar To be fair So kalau kata, okay, kerajaan kata, alright, uh, apa tu, uh, kita kenakan 2% tax untuk dividend income of 100,000. If you reverse balik, 100,000 tu, kalau 2% dividend yield lah, 100,000, that is equivalent to uh, stock yang dia ada tu 5 juta. Stock saja 5 juta, maknanya they are really deep pocket. They can pay. Yeah, so 2%, you reverse balik, 5 million. So, kerajaan kata tak apa, kita tax sikit orang ni, tapi if you, if you calculate pun, 2% daripada 100,000 yang kerajaan announce tu, so, baru 2,000, 2,000. Yeah. So I think they can afford to pay lah. Okay. So having said that, ah, we all know him. Uh, he stood at the parliament recently. I was, uh, I was told dia nak habiskan baca belajawat tu dalam masa dua jam tak sempat juga dua setengah jam. Uh, I personally think that is a very strong uh, apa tu belajawat. Uh, I was very surprised. Uh, dia kata, okay. Uh, Development expenditure ni, uh, FRA, Fiscal Responsibility Act, dia dah kata must be 3% of GDP. Betul, dia kata 85 billion. Tapi dia dia make PFI another 9 billion, dia make GLIC, ha? GLIC macam kuat ke EPF ke belanja 25 billion untuk development expenditure. In total, development expenditure alone is going to be 120 billion. That is equivalent to 6% of GDP. So maknanya, I can have the comfort that our economy is going to be resilient for the next few years. Because of the right reform that he did, dia naikkan harga minyak, bukan naikkan, dia apungkan harga minyak. Okay, apungkan harga minyak, uh, lepas tu uh, maybe diesel akan diapungkan ke seluruh negara. Ya, uh, lepas tu adalah uh, SRI ni, uh, dia dah buat untuk uh, ayam, I was told, uh, subsidi untuk telur ayam saja 3 bilion. Banyak ni orang Malaysia makan ayam. Makan telur ayam. 3 bilion. So, subsidi untuk non-fuel, which is food as I mentioned. Uh, chicken lah, uh, chicken nak apa ya? Uh, ayam lah, LPG, apa-apa saja makanan berkaitan 32 bilion. 32 bilion. So, jadi uh, I think it's right that uh, he kata uh, uh, gula tax. Dia kata gula tax kalau satu liter naik 40 sen. Tapi kalau you minum teh tarik you, you tak minum satu liter tu. Satu liter tu banyak tu. So satu kalau telah kecil tu, 250 liter. So actually teh tarik you naik 40 sen je. 10 sen. 
So kalau mama tu naikkan 50 sen tu ngadu dalam kerajaan Because you patut naik 10 sen tapi ada juga ayu So maknanya if I do not want to feed uh, my gula tu You potong lah harga which is true So you kena potong lah You know uh, So we we need to actually do our duty as a citizen uh, To actually laporkan kepada kerajaan kan eh? So I think he did uh, quite a bit uh, But I think he gave him the comfort because Uh, the next general election is way ahead, lama lagi, 2027 uh, Dia punya term dia habis November 2027 Dia ada 60 hari untuk call maknanya early 2028 lah Okay so far I think on that is the economy I'm happy to share that our growth potential is also very I, If if I'm being asked adakah uh, growth potential very high ni akan menyebabkan inflasi naik I don't think so kerana our growth potential is about 6% plus maknanya kita ada negative uh, supply gap kita tak nampak ada banyak spare capacity in the economy uh, then kita uh, apa tu oh, I, I want to mention something uh, did you realize that the government uh, share that their expectation untuk uh, labor market next year they expect labor market unemployment to reach about 3.1% compared to 3% this year that is a full employment that is a full employment the first that we achieve post covid dia post post covid dulu i still remember i look at the unemployment figure it's about 5.5% itu pun formal sector tak masuk informal sector so jadi kalau kerajaan kata uh, unemployment is going to reach 3.1% rest assured it's going to be full employment it's a pride and joy for kita dan kita punya level cost uh, participation rate is about 70% the second highest in the region And then dia nak kata dia nak push labor force participation rate untuk tinggi. Because Malaysia punya labor maknanya kalau kita nampak universiti you know, student dia ramai yang email. Tapi lepas tu dia nak kahwin, dia dah ada family, dia pun keluar. Kerajaan kata tak boleh. Because kita hilang uh, this uh, train, uh, apa tu, uh, train uh, workers. So dia kata dia nak bagi banyak insentif supaya pekerja-pekerja perempuan tu balik kepada workforce. Yeah. So jadi dia targetkan uh, our current, uh, I think Zaf kata fourth quarter 23, uh, 23 level force participation rate for women is about 58%. They're going to increase that to about 60%. So that is a very good uh, visibility for the country. Yeah? So I have make sure about stronger prospect. I am looking at the numbers every day. I think that uh, our growth prospect is able to reach bridge 5.2, 5.3. Uh, we know that the kerajaan menjangkakan Okay, when I go to work, I lalu KSCC. Every day I lalu KSCC. I have never seen so many buses in the KSCC. Pun nampak ni, bus dah berlaku. You know, so maknanya, it tells you that the tourism sector is booming. Dan kerajaan menjangkakan, uh, tourist, number of tourists last year 20 juta, tahun ini 27 juta. That is close to 40% increase. By the time visit Malaysia year 2026, 2027, Uh, the, uh, kerajaan menjangkakan kemasukan pelancong asing mencecah 35 juta yang akan membawa aliran masuk 147 bilion almost 10% of GDP Yo, so jadi uh, the, the great thing about tourism ni dia bila pelancong tu uh, berbelanja seringgit dia akan trigger many other sector airline, accommodation, heritage, uh, uh, F&B, uh, hotel so dia ada banyak So jadi itu sebab uh, kita belum berlumba untuk mendapatkan uh, pelancong asing. Nah, kerajaan kali ini dia akan belanjakan tak silap saya dalam 550 juta untuk promotion uh, uh, promosi untuk visit uh, Malaysia. Tapi kali ini dia get smarter. Because dia kata dia are very targeted on siapa dia nak masuk ni. The first tier is actually China, India. The second tier is GCC country. Uh, dengan Australia ada a third tier tu ada ingat. So maknanya dia they make it very very targeted program airline uh, lepas tu people kita letak kat sana so I think uh, tourism is going to be among the growth driver for this year and also next year. Oh, we know him. Do we know him? I I tak tahu lah. I maybe tak kenal dia apa you know. We know him. Uh, dia sedang berhempas pulas untuk uh, di uh, dinaik dia semula sebagai presiden Amerika yang ke-47. Uh, I hope my prediction is right. I I think that he gonna mellow down uh, because umur dia itu cuma lapan. Sebenarnya dia bercakap dia dia adalah bercakap negatif about Joe Biden tapi dia pun tak jauh dengan Joe Biden pun empat tahun je. 
you know tapi dia pun uh, 78 Kamala Harris 58 so jadi uh, banyak beza so, jadi sebenarnya tapi uh, you know dalam pilihan raya apa-apa pun boleh terjadi uh, dia dah start dia punya campaign negatively dengan Kamala Harris Uh, so if that is concerned tapi untuk uh, uh, kita punya market ni sebenarnya kalau dia naik is positif lah kerana um, uh, we receive uh, information that there's a lot of manufacturer policy would like to open their plant here ya yeah? untuk mengeluarkan barang-barang dia you know untuk circumvent kalau kata China as you know that China punya indica dah naik tariff dia begitu tinggi Uh, so jadi I think Trump will do what could to actually uh, what they call uh, hurt China. He need to hurt someone to get popular. That's a problem with him. You know. So jadi uh, he he still gonna use the same thing lah. So we think that uh, what they call um, this is the China one narrative. Uh, China one and Taiwan plus narrative. Maknanya uh, producer producer manufacturing uh, for, uh, uh, company so akan buka kilang dari kat sini ya. So kita akan mendapat limpah hanya banyak. So actually uh, this is a narrowing bond yield, uh, slightly technical. Tetapi sampai to say that bila bond yield tu menurun uh, kerana uh, uh, kekurangan uh, uh, pengecilan uh, issuance of bond of the government, maknanya bond yield ni akan juga menguncuk. Jadi menguncuk, if you are investor, do I want to put my money in uh, bond ataupun equity? So I showed you just now that equity can give you a good return, uh, double digit. So if kalau I jadi investor, I letak duit I dalam MDM ke ASEAN, dalam equity market lah. Okay, among other things, uh, among other things, uh, how is it on Oh, 12. Okay, let me make it quickly. Uh, this is actually uh, headwinds from China. China is a big problem for us. Uh, luckily that the government dah announced over 300 billion of fiscal stimulus. Uh, recently, uh, to help uh, decline the decline in their output, why China is important. Uh, China plus India plus Pakistan, they import 40% of our CPO, and China is our biggest trade partner at about uh, 20%. Uh, the past two US slow disinflation momentum. I think uh, uh, I'm still worried, you know, because I'm worried mainly because of this. Ini uh, kerja kosong kat Amerika ada lebih 8 juta. Ya, lapan juta. So maknanya inflasi itu boleh melantun kembali dengan begitu senang. Jadi bila melantun tu maknanya kadang faedah mungkin akan dinaikkan because of demand pool. Ya, so that is a concern. Uh, next one event, uh, we know that uh, they are currently brewing war uh, dekat Middle East. Unfortunately, uh, between Lebanon, uh, could be Iran uh, dengan uh, Palestine. Uh, we know that Iran produce 3.3 million bar- oil, uh, barrel of oil per day. So kalau katalah uh, perang tu merebak, uh, katalah Amerika kata jangan produce maknanya harga minyak tu akan naik. Tapi perlu diingat, uh, Amerika ni mempunyai simpanan minyak yang tinggi. Simpanan minyak ni tinggi dalam 48 million barrel per second. So maknanya jika ada peperangan dunia, dia boleh buat keluarkan simpanan dia untuk menstabilkan harga minyak. Remember, uh, the US presidential election is coming. So the the Joe Biden need to make sure that harga minyak tak naik. Because kalau harga minyak naik, dia Kamala tak akan uh, be elected, uh, will be elected lah. So these are actually among the new political that we see. Okay, this is him. You know him again. Uh, this is actually kalau he... Okay, he promised a lot of things masa dia nak uh, dilantik ya, jadi uh, pemerintah dulu. Dia kata dia nak buat uh, economic reform, judicial reform, political reform. Kalau dia kata dekat uh, investor, dia kata kami nak reform economically, harga minyak ke, harga resale ke, dia tak buat, investor akan lagi. That's for sure. Maknanya, I cannot trust your word. So, that is among the risk that we see. Okay, this is sensitivity analysis. Just to give you some, ah, uh, uh, some direction. Uh, our first half of the target is one eight seven five, but of course this is our target. It's always subject to changes. They will, uh, we will, uh, make our, ah, uh, analysis again by the end of the year. Uh, I think actually we will give a new one a target. Ah, uh, kita nampak tak boleh ya. So I think kita nak buat satu itu. So this is our second half of the uh, sector recommendation. Uh, construction, <coughs> overweight, healthcare, oil and gas, property, telcos, uh, utility, uh, most of the analysts are here. Uh, if you have any questions, I would like to go uh, quickly on uh, this special sharia team, uh, Islamic finance and fintech. Fintech is going to boom, uh, mainly because the low 
the high growth rate or Islamic finance. Uh, I just want to share with you these are among the things that uh, the Islamic fintech can uh, uh, deep dive on the cashier transaction, the robo advisors, e wallet, remittance, uh, even SC sudah keluarkan uh, kertas kerja berkaitan dengan fintech. Eh? So jadi kalau siapa-siapa yang nak buat crowdfunding uh, for Islamic finance and whatnot, the apa tu uh, the guidelines are there. Uh, we think that uh, there are a lot of uh, differences uh, between the conventional and also uh, Islamic um, uh, Islamic uh, fintech. Among others, that uh, Islamic fintech must comply to the principle of Islamic law, uh, prohibition or riba and speculative activity. Target audience are different. Uh, regulatory framework is subject to the uh, Sharia Advisory Council and product offering, although could be uh, similar. What could push the uh, Islamic fintech higher? Uh, these are the eight things that we think uh, supporting business environment, public role, uh, regulatory support. Uh, we all know the new generation, the middle millennials and also Gen Y. Uh, they, they don't really, in the UK, I was told they don't really open their savings account to the bank. They don't even uh, they go online. So, when you're online, they don't get up from the seat. So, the, I think we are moving towards that as well. You know, so therefore, uh, uh, FinTech is, uh, service FinTech is very important. Uh, tetapi ada challenges yang kita nampak regulatory uh, compliance lack of standardization ni is memang a major problem yeah uh, because uh, tak ada harmonization across the Muslim countries so that is one of the things that uh, I think we need to address lack of awareness and of course competition dengan the uh, commercial fintech huh? now the potential is huge I think because of huge adoption uh, investment and funding uh, I will expect a Islamic fintech uh, to receive huge support venture, from venture capitalists, angel investors to actually drive that higher. Uh, in the conclusion, I think this is a conclusion. We think that uh, Islamic finance or Islamic fintech is going to boom, uh, mainly because sekarang dia tak boom lagi kerana tak ada awareness. So, jadi bila kita ada awareness nanti, you know, we think that Islamic fintech will fly together uh, dengan uh, conventional fintech. Now, uh, I wish I can uh, I have more time, but I need. I think I need to pass to David to do. Uh, this is part of our uh, submission to Bursa uh, for the Bursa Sharia scheme. Um, if you have any question, I will be here until the end of the uh, event today. Uh, without further ado, let me um, uh, invite uh, David uh, to to the stage. Uh, a round of applause for him. Uh, uh, for uh, thank you so much. I will. I I can address. Uh, because I'll be here until the end. Thank you.